Today we're going to have a look at various insulations and their ability to protect against the commonly overlooked problem of overheating in the building fabric. When insulations are being specified, oftentimes the thermal conductivity or the lambda value of the insulation is the primary concern of the architect or the designer. If we look at here in the samples that we have, we have polystyrene, wood fibre and mineral wool. These insulations with the polystyrene have a conductivity value of 0 0.035, wood fibre 0 0.04 and mineral wool similar 0 0.04 to 0 0.042 watts per metre kelvin. Although the thermal conductivity is a useful measurement in telling us how well the insulation performs at keeping the heat within the building, it doesn't tell us how well the insulation performs in stopping external heat transferring from outside to inside. For this, we need to consider insulation specific heat capacity. The specific heat capacity indicates how many joules of energy are required to heat one kilogram of a material by one degree Kelvin. And as we'll see here, natural materials such as wood fibre, hemp and cellulose will have a relative high specific heat capacity when compared to something like EPS and glass wool. The higher the value, the better the insulation is in helping to prevent the transfer of external heat from the outside air to the inside the building. To illustrate this, let's see how these heat lamps transfer heat through the various materials. We have a temperature sensor around the bulb, as well as a temperature sensor embedded within each of the materials. The starting off temperature within the material is 20 degrees. Let's see how the heat transfers after 15 minutes. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes, so we'll turn off the bulbs, we'll have a look at the temperatures. What you find is the temperature nearest the sensor will be around 31 to 32 degrees, but the temperatures within the insulations will be significantly different. If we have a look at the, the polystyrene first, we'll see here that the temperature sensor within the polystyrene is showing 42.6 degrees, whereas on the wood fibre, it's showing that it's 24.9 degrees. And on the mineral wool, 70 degrees. What this shows is that the wood fibre is by far the best specific thermal capacity insulation of the three. The polystyrene transfers a lot of the heat from the external to the internal. Similarly, on the right hand side, the rock wool will transfer that external heat into the internal. Whereas the Gutex wood fibre buffers that heat transfer and stabilizes the temperature between outside and inside. So this graph here illustrates what we just looked at. What we find is we had a starting temperature of around 20 degrees Celsius. And after we turned on the heat bulbs, what you'll see is a sharp rise in the temperature of the mineral wool. This is followed by another sharp rise in the polystyrene and a far slower rise in the Gutex insulation. The wood fibre material will work to increase the decrement delay of the building. The decrement delay refers to the time it takes for heat generated by the sun to transfer from the outside to the inside of the building's envelope and affect the internal conditions. The use of a dense wood fibre insulation becomes particularly useful in an attic room or loft conversion as well as a lightweight timber garden office or workshop. The wood fibre will help to stabilise fluctuations in internal temperature, making sure it's not too hot nor too cold. Gutex wood fibre, the perfect Goldilocks insulation material.